Greetings to you all and welcome back to Let's Play Time Crisis. And welcome to the rest that's given to us by the pause menu. Thank the Lord for the pause menu. Now then I can explain a few more things I haven't said about the game. Um, bottom right hand corner, your time, top time. Not sure if YouTube's going to be able to display that in a manner which you can actually read, but it does say your time in blue, then top time in red. They are as they would, would sound. Your time is how long it's taken me to get to this point. Top time is the best ever score at getting to this point. It's not actually this point, it's the end of the current stage and whatever. And for me, that's just some computer generated time because I've never been able to beat it. Bottom left is action over the bullets. The game has two different modes, either action, which is when I'm ducking and jumping up and shooting, or wait when I'm walking from place to place. I can't shoot when it's in wait. I didn't say that, but I think it's worth saying. Because you may have been wondering why when I'm walking to a point and I can see people running about all over the place, I don't bother to shoot them. It's because I'm in wait and I can't fire. Anyway, that should just about explain what's going on. Careful not to hold the trigger when you try to get rid of the pause menu or you just quit the game entirely, which is well, quite funny, but not helpful. And it's time to resume killing. Right, it's the time to resume killing. Wrong button, there we go. Cursed thing. Oh, well, that's fine. We've lost our first credit. We have 20 seconds to make our decision of yes or no. Not sure why the no has got such an exclamation after it, but all right, we're going to make yes. Put us back to the start of the area that we were currently in. So that puts us on this bridge, which is a little way back. Which is a shame, because I happen to know that that red person was the final enemy of this area. So, a shame to die to him, but not the end of the world. We have a lot of credits. Though, if you were playing this game in the arcade and happen to live in England, as I do, then you would now be putting in another pound. Maybe not nowadays, because hopefully the arcades have updated a bit lately, but I don't know, I've still seen Time Crisis 1 in arcades. Even with its comically blocky graphics. You have to remember, back in the day, this was outstanding. The gameplay? Still is. The graphics? Less so. Just give us a good chance to listen to the death cries of people falling over the side once again, though. Hilarious stuff. There's a screen I don't like, which I do with much better proficiency in this time round. Careful of the red man, there he is. And the red people don't hit on every shot, as I kind of said they did last time. Their first shot is almost always going to hit. But their second and third shots are less impressive. Accuracy is looking pretty good though, 75, I'll take that properly. Look out! My name is Sherudo. I rule this nation now. So, you are the fool who came to rescue Rachel. Since you have traveled so very far, be my guest and let me entertain you! It's a pretty badass line, I do feel. We have come very far to his castle, and he's going to entertain me by lobbing knives at me, the evil fellow. Now, he does have many minions, and they are white. I'm not too sure on the statistics of white people. They are better than brown, but not as good as red. But the advantage of white people is that they can equip any weapon. Now, whites are pretty much the personal guards of Sherudo. Which I like to say with a bit of a twang, not sure why. And Shadow Do throws knives at you. If a knife hits you, it is guaranteed to do damage at 100% accuracy. Same as a grenade in that fashion, but you can't shoot a knife at the air. Or if you can, I can't. So shoot him once in the crotch, which makes a big explosion of blood appear, and he should do a girly scream, as do his men when they have knives. Everyone who wields knives does girly screams. This is a fact for life for you there. Stop hiding, you fool! There we go. So, just Sherudo to go. I think one more shot will kill him. We'll give him a more manly scream and his entire stomach will just explode gastrically all over the floor. And we shall look impressive as we look over him. How could you? You killed my boss. What do I do now? I can't let things end this way. Since I have the upper hand, having the girl and all, I'll press my luck. You wait here. <laughs> what a dastardly fellow! He has doors and things he can close, but we have even better plans. And they are as follows. 
Yeah, it's out the window and we'll climb down these rocks which are just have no grip whatsoever. We'll just climb down those like a spider. Wonderful stuff, and then we shall jump many, many hundreds of feet and land perfectly. And then a helicopter will come and we'll go, fine. We'll take that down because it doesn't have the good sense to drop its people facing us. It drops them all with their backs to us. So we'll just shoot them all in the back and progress nicely. Red man, you sneaky fellow, away with you. So, Wild Dog is a little annoyed that we've killed his boss, not because he's friends with Shadow Doe and he's a bit upset, but because he was going to pay him. If you recall, Wild Dog was a mercenary who was hired by Shadow Doe. Now, these are gun emplacements, and if we let the people who are stood beside them, we give them long enough and they will start firing them at us, and they are guaranteed hit weapons and very hard to kill. Here is another one of those things, which has a man manning it, and it's really hard to shoot because he's so far away and he has a shield, obviously, to protect him. This is probably the hardest enemy in the game right now, is this helicopter, which takes a lot more bullets than the previous one. It's not dead when it blows up. And I use a little bit of frantic button mashing to be able to see what's going on around the corner without exposing myself, which is a bit of abuse, but there we go. Now, the big problem with this helicopter is not that it's that difficult, it's that it takes a long time to kill, which means I only have 15 seconds left. But that's okay. This is pretty much the last scene of this area. We're doing pretty good. So that will do us absolutely fine. So no worries about time whatsoever. We're going on to area two of stage number three of three. So we are getting pretty close to the end now, but hey, it's a short game. Nothing wrong with that. It's good fun. Doesn't have to last for tens of hours in order to be a good game. Now this area's gimmick is that just about every single screen has some kind of object blocking your view. In this first screen it is boxes, which means you can only just see the occasional head pop up. You're an irritating man. And there we do get to hear a good sample of what happens when you die. Now imagine you're fighting in this, this another war, this battle. You are a mercenary, you've been employed to kill this man. You're not a particularly good shot, so your odds aren't looking too great. Nonetheless, you're fighting, and you take a bullet straight to the head. Or, no, not to the head, that would kill you outright. To the leg, say. What would your response be? Would it be some kind of cursing? A swear word? Probably would. Maybe you'd just opt for, ow. That's pretty strong on its own. Would you really shout out, shucks? Don't think you would. Still, it's funny, so we'll live with that. Didn't mention it on the previous screen, but those boxes that we're circling around are danger. Which means that if you don't duck when they go past, they will hit you in the face. Considering you've probably killed hundreds and hundreds of soldiers up to this point, it's quite sad to say you've died to a box. But it can happen, so be careful. Now I'm running low on time, because I only get a little bit of extra time every time I clear a screen. Which means that for this screen, which is a pretty tough one, I have very little time left. Little tip on that screen, all the people are facing away, and that grenade hit me in the face. So you can shoot them all in a particular order, because they're all facing the wrong way, they react at different speeds. If you know which one's going to react first, second, third, you can shoot them in the correct order to basically kill them all before anyone's turned around. Wonderful stuff. I missed the guy who was worth the extra seconds, who I really would have liked. This guy with the minigun just shooting nothing as he slides down the pole that serves no purpose. And time is up, so we get to see another credit loss. Now that's a bit of a shame. But hey, we've lost two credits. We're getting pretty close to the end. Can we do it on just one more credit? Maybe? Let's find out. So we triumphantly cry yes to that question. So once again, there's the guy who first spots us, and I'll shoot people in the order which is not optimal, but still pretty damn good. And then one grenadier will pop his head up, and we shall shoot him down neatly like so, which I'll miss those two reinforcement guys. Now those two guys who do appear, you don't have to kill them instantly. You don't have to kill them to progress the screen or anything like that. But if you don't kill them, then they will be present on the next screen. So you have to kill them at some point. If you can kill them when you first see them, you should. If you fail to, then worry. And this one has a nice right to left action, and then it tricks you like so, and I missed the red fellow, who I knew was coming. So quite bad that I missed him even knowing he was going to be there. Always take out the red chaps first, even when you are fighting against white enemies. Despite how fancy they look, they are not as good as the reds. 
And here is the level 1 boss again. If you're recording, it takes 3 hits to kill, and that's exactly the same this time around. You have to shoot him 3 times. Every time you kill him, you basically progress to a new spawning of enemies, and now he has fallen. That's wonderful. We have his minion to go, and we can go into the lift. Oh! Curses, he has a gun. What shall we do? Well, we'll get in the other lift. No worries. So Ronald Dark is a mercenary, he's a pretty skilled gunman himself, and he wants his pay. Because he can't get his pay, because his boss is dead, he's going to just adopt his boss's plan and go for this military secrets idea, which is wonderful. Because I'm sure he can do a lot with those. People are going to Tarzan their way in through the windows of this church, which is located deep within the boss's castle hideout thing. Not sure why they have the really super modern lift that goes straight into the church. Apparently a very important aspect of this place is their church, and they want as much access to it as they can get. Now, important moment, so I shall be quiet. Oh, you're finally here to save me. Let's end this once and for all. Just to be sure. Freeze! Both you and this... Thinking castle can burn for all I care. So long. Let me go. Hold it. <laughs> Few things worth mentioning. Number one. We have the ability to pause. Number two, the widest gun I have ever seen. Number three, she could have got away from him all along if she just shrugged her arm lightly. Now he is burning down the whole castle because, well, he doesn't care, it's not his castle. And he's going to take the helicopter, steal the girl and extort her for money. I don't know, he wants some pay, that's what he wants. We are very annoyed, as you can tell by our face. Maybe you want to rewind the video and look at that again, because that was a seriously angry face we pulled. But hey, that's what's going on. This is a wild dog. He is the final fight for this game, in the arcade mode anyway. But I'm going to save him for the next video. Hopefully you'll join me for that, and I shall see you then.